Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at scitechculture.com. Hello and welcome to SciTech Culture, the show where we discuss science, technology, and culture in its myriad of forms. My name is Ben Warner, and I'm joined once again by my good friend and colleague, Steve Kern. How are we today, Steve? I'm good, thanks, Ben. Sounds like we're going to have another interesting chat today. Yeah, absolutely, because we we love talking about our devices, and um, to you know, to avoid sounding like a broken record, I guess it may be one of the last times for this year because I think everyone's gotten their their gear out, um, so to speak, for 2015. But to give you an overview, Microsoft and Google have made their new tech announcements for late 2015. From Google announcing it has reached 1.4 billion people with Android, to Microsoft surprising everyone by pushing further into the premium device market with their new Surface Book. The tech giants have made some interesting and exciting contributions to this to the tech space for this year, which is what we're going to talk about now. Now, I'm just uh, pulling up an article from uh, The Verge here. Uh, so we'll start talking about the Google stuff if we can, um, because that was the, the, the event that came first. And um, so they've got some uh, new phones, the six, Nexus 6P and the Nexus 5X. Um, I love the, I don't know if I'm quite sold on the naming there. But then again, you know, Apple's got the 6S. So, you know, who knows what they, what's going on there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the thing that's uh, obviously interesting in here, I guess, especially if you're an Android fan, is that it's the pure, um, I guess, experience that you're getting from them. And not just that, but also, um, you know, with, with all of their Nexus uh, line. Um They've adopted that USB Type C port, um, which is probably going to become more of a standard as it goes along. Um, interestingly, the fingerprint sensor is on the back of the phone, which um, I'm not quite sure how that's. Um, I'm not sure how you do that. Uh, someone would have to show me or something. I'm not sure how that works. Do you need a hole in the back of the cover or something? <laughs> Well, you know, they probably will. You know, like most of the uh, Android covers I've uh, cases I've seen have got the, uh, you know, strategically uh, cut out ports, ports if you need them. That's if you get one of those. Um, so interesting stuff there. Um, there's a couple of other things that, you know, they've got a new Chromecast. And it, the, maybe that wasn't as interesting as uh, the Chromecast audio, which I thought was a bit, um, bit odd, yeah. um, you know, that... They've got a separate device that you can use to plug your speakers into, I guess, to, to get that happening. And, you know, that'd be arguable that that's a good idea because if you think of something like a Sonos um, system or uh, where, yeah. you know, you have to spend thousands and thousands to get that, you know, sort of working right um, or um, and even like a Bose setup, um, which can be very expensive, this could probably get you in, you know, so, you know sort of house-wide audio you know, at a cheaper price point, I guess, if that makes sense. So interesting there too. And they've got the um, a new Pixel uh, computer. Um, $499 for that one, it seems, running uh, the new Android 6.0 Marshmallow. So I don't know if, um, I mean, I'm not, um, as long-time listeners know, I'm not um, so much into Android uh, that much, but I still kind of like sticking my nose in there and seeing uh, <laughs> seeing what's available, especially when um, there's new hardware. So what do you think of all that, Steve? <laughs> I'm pretty interested in this because I might be going to an Android phone shortly. Yeah, so. <laughs> as, as you've intimated in the last few episodes, yes. But... Um, I mean, uh, reading about this stuff is really interesting. I mean, mm. I, I try to approach it, I guess, from a, a true Android perspective. So, you know, if you go uh, like uh, some of the people I know, if you go down the Android path and you get yourself, you know, a Nexus device, you, if you're in the Google environment especially, these phones work very well, mm. you know, and, and the experience is, is excellent. But, I mean, we're going to talk about the... Uh, uh, Lumia phone in, in a second, but it, it's interesting how these companies are trying to bring about a product that has that expansive range across an operating system and to features. And that's what I'm really excited about seeing with Android, uh, mm. whether it's, you know, a pure Android or a skinned one, uh, is, is that customization and that ability to sort of go outside and beyond uh, a locked ecosystem. So I think obviously that the Nexus is priced so competitively 
and it's a very powerful phone. So I'm looking forward to finding out more about, you know, that sort of environment in general, I think. Well, it's interesting that the, and we'll talk about how Microsoft's doing this as well, um, that the major tech giants are going um, for services now as opposed to uh, computers or devices or whatever, even though that's part of the lineup as well because they're making money off of that too. But, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can remember in the back in the day that um, your computing environment was locked into probably one computer. Yeah. Um, usually locked at the desk, um, you know, really back in the day and that was it. So yeah. now it's... Um, the device uh it's like a seamless experience between multiple devices that they're going for and um i know if you know obviously I, this isn't the uh, the time we're talking about apple but i know that from my experience the apple stuff works really well in that regard um i can just um, hop in between whatever device i'm using whether it's an iphone an ipad a macbook or an imac whatever and i can just chop and change between the two and just pick up where i left off and the um all of these companies are doing that. So, you know, with uh, a lot of the things that uh, Google's announced too, I guess maybe they've got an advantage in that they just, they're, they're the company that have sort of staked the claim of throwing things at the wall to see what sticks and they're happy to throw, throw new things out there um, for people to try. And uh, you get that sort of variety that you wouldn't get, say, from Apple. Oh, look, absolutely. And I mean, uh, you know, if you're a, a Google account user, you mm. use Google Docs and any other than one of their myriad of services, the Nexus is a very powerful experience. I, I know from, from friends who use it and seeing them use it, just how powerful it can be. I just wonder um, in that environment, though, I mean, the, the, the Google sort of docs environment compared to, say, you know, the office environment. Mm. And then there are a lot of third-party apps now as well, you know, which allow collaboration and or a single sign-in from multiple devices. Uh, and I think maybe that puts the Google environment under a bit of pressure or, or, or makes it a... Uh, a very Google alternative. So I don't know. Yeah. This, these are very interesting developments because that that single sign-on through multiple devices to a single point is is definitely the that's the cloud and that's definitely the way of the future. Um, and uh, the next one I wanted to make, which will sort of end um, a little bit on what we were talking about with Google just now and transition into Microsoft's announcements, was this idea that they're both, um, uh, and Google's doing this through its Nexus line, promoting this uh, pure Android uh, experience. Um, and, and again, if you, we bring Microsoft in now, the Surface and Lumia um, devices that they've created are also the equivalent of the pure, so they're the pure Windows experience uh, without getting like their OEMs yep. in to throw in all their crapware that they usually put on <laughs> devices and such um, or Samsung on, I don't know if they do that on uh, the uh, the S6 or any of the, yep. uh, the Samsung products. So you get that pure experience and it's interesting that both of those companies are offering that as... Um, as, uh, as an option for people, even if it's, um, in Microsoft's case, a more um, expensive option, uh, but it's there nonetheless, whereas we didn't have that before. I'm really excited by what Microsoft is doing. Mm. I mean, <clears throat> at one level, I do believe that they're emulating Apple for all the right reason, yeah. reasons. You know, Apple really for a long time has been the only quality provider of uh, Harvard Ware and, and I guess operating ecosystem. Yeah. They're now emulating that. We know that the Surface is a great product yeah. and people are starting to really like Windows 8 and Windows 10. So that's, oh, maybe, that's, maybe Windows 10 more than Windows 8. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay. There were people out there that didn't like Windows 8. Mm. I disagree with them. But yeah. as long as everyone likes Windows 10. Yeah. But we're seeing an evolution of an operating system there. But yeah. I wouldn't draw a, a natural comparison to iOS. But as a premium product with its own environment, the, the similarities are there. Mm. And I think that's really exciting. And I think what's interesting, I don't know whether it's intended, but Microsoft almost seemed to be working backwards from where Apple did. So remember, iOS and all the success that Apple has really had came mm. through the iPod. Yeah, yeah. Now, Windows has the desktop environment, and that's where Windows comes from. And I reckon they're taking a really brave step here. I mean, they've transitioned it no problem to the Surface Pro, which is really a premium laptop. 
Mm. And if I was another laptop maker of any of the laptops that we're sort of familiar with outside of Apple, um, I'd be scared because the Surface Pro, if you're a Windows kind of person, is a great machine. Mm. And they're just going to move all of that environment to a phone, the reverse of the iPod. Yeah. Yeah. Will it work? I don't, I don't know, but there's every chance that it will. And like Google, with a one-stop shop, you've got the one-stop Windows environment, and mm. just like Apple, you've got the one-stop ecosystem. So it's very powerful exactly, and very exciting. I don't know if it'll work. Well, I mean, that, that they seem to be, one would seem to think they might be on the right track because the Surface has been a financial success for them now, even though they took some early blows um, with the first couple of devices. Um, apparently, uh, almost a $1 billion write down at one stage. Um, but um, now they're making money. I think they're catching on. I think it was the Surface Pro 3 that really um, sort of, and the Surface 3 by extension, that got them going. Um, I mean, I don't think there's much, too much to say about the Surface Pro 4 other than to say it's an evolution of that line and uh, they've come out with a better type cover and things like that. And, you know, it's obviously an improvement. What was really interesting, I thought, was that Surface Book, which um, is, is, it is a two-in-one, but it's primarily a laptop that can sometimes be a tablet if you need it to be. Um, which in effect is if you take the screen off, it becomes a Surface Pro 4. Um, but if you plug it into its dock with the, the hard keyboard, which I think is important, um, having that yeah. hard keyboard there, it becomes a, like a really powerful uh, machine. And that I thought was um, a very, uh, very interesting uh, thing to do. It looks a bit odd in the pictures um, at some point, especially with that snaky sort of um, uh, curved um, part where the uh, laptop sort of the screen folds back and that sort of thing but it definitely looks very premium and uh like a very interesting device dare i say it that if uh, i hadn't uh you know invested so heavily in uh, the apple hardware system and i had an excuse to spend two grand two or three grand on one of these i'd probably want to pick one up myself well it's, it's interesting <laughs> the people who, know who uh, use the surface three have uh said it's great machines but but talk about the lack of integration going from device to device. Mm. And that's still the ecosystem that, that Microsoft are working on. This is a really big step and mm. really quite exciting for them. Yeah. I think the real one here are the Lumia phones. Yeah. They're mm. brilliantly priced. And I imagine that if you've got one of those devices, then working across every platform becomes easy and uh, really well integrated. Mm. I think... You know, if you look at the combination of price, the quality of the phone and what you get on it, I would be very keen to try one of the latest Lumias, except I don't believe it's mature enough yet. So, yeah. <laughs> so maybe after my next phone, maybe we'll go there. Well, you never get uh, version one, of, of course, of anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. So we'll wait and see. But if... if uh, I think this is a long-term play by Microsoft and they're quite happy to wait and see how things go. And, you know, if this version of the Lumia just hangs in there, mm. then potentially the next version will be better and, and they'll get that ecosystem better integrated at every stage from here on. And when, you know, just like with Apple, you have your Airbook or MacBook and you have your phone, you have your tablet, and all three of them are working happily together. Hmm. You know, Microsoft now have got the, the desktop, they've got the, the Pro, the Surface, and, uh, you know, potentially they've got the phone in there as well. You know, they've got everything covered. I think where um, they may have a, a fairly good shot at um, being really big here is that um, they've historically always had the enterprise at their back, um, particularly because, you know, enterprise chose Windows primarily as their yeah. uh, backbone um if they get all of that firing um i mean apple really is a consumer um, orientated company and has gotten all of its success from consumer dollars and even though they've had their partnerships recent partnerships with ibm and whatnot trying to get more into the enterprise windows you would think has a more natural way of um infiltrating the enterprise in this way and if they've created devices now that can talk to um, desktop PCs in the enterprise, then they, they could be in for a really big, um, you know, big thing here. 
Well, that's that's where it's at. I mean, let's face it, no one's ever used Microsoft Office for fun. <laughs> <laughs> you use it because you have to, yeah. and it's a great work tool. And, and, you know, we've spoken about this before, and I think Microsoft have made it clear. At some point, they can integrate that, just charge a minimal license, and, mm. you know, sell it the operating system and their access all with the hardware and I think that's the future of evolution and I'm, I actually think they've done probably a pretty good job in the last two or three years of thinking their way through this and, and not being panicked. Mm. They, they've got a plan and they're sticking to it and it looks like a good plan from the outside. We just yeah. have to start buying them now, that's yeah, all. <laughs> that's right. Um, the, um, the interesting thing I think if just to wrap it up is that um, regardless of whichever solution you pick, um, there's still that possibility of, um, you know, sort of playing in different ecosystems and uh, we'll see how long it lasts. But um, Microsoft has made um, pushes to put, um, you know, my, uh, Office, for, for instance, on the iPad and things like that. I'd argue that the best tablet experience for Office is actually on the iPad, which is pretty ironic, um, you know, given how things have played out. Um, but... Um, you know, you you do have that. You know, if Microsoft gets a bit more traction in the market, they, that philosophy may change. But you know, who knows what will happen in the future? But it's interesting that you can do that. You can have your Google services um, yeah. if you want them. Um, and look, the one sort of final linchpin, I guess, is if they can get Windows Phone to really get some more traction, so that developers develop more um, of the apps that we need uh, on that platform. I think that's really where that platform is hamstrung. It's just it doesn't have the apps that iOS and Android have. So whereas, um, you know, on I iOS you can get your Android apps, um, you can get Microsoft apps on, on Android and uh, iOS if you want. You know, you've got that sort of option. Uh, that's where Windows Phone doesn't quite have it. But if maybe, like you said, maybe if they keep sticking to it and uh, um, it, be, it makes sense to have a, a phone now that you've got a, you know, a Surface and a, you know, a desktop that's all running the same operating system, they might be in with a chance there. Well, that's it. And remember, uh, you know, they have got the uh, the gaming consoles, which you can draw into all mm. of that. I noticed that the uh, Sony uh, phone handsets are very well integrated with, uh, you know, Sony gaming systems. I'm sure Microsoft is going to look at that. <clears throat> Every feature, everything that they can claw on, they've got a great yeah. big business with lots of options. I think they'll find them and, uh, you know, that's... Who knows what they'll come up with, but if they crack it, then, yeah, then they will be around for a long time. Yeah. Oh, well, they have been around for a long time. So you'd, you'd, you'd hope that they would be, really, because they've been there at the, for pretty much from the start with uh, with Apple. So, um, uh, and I guess all the others that have kind of become a little bit more dull, like uh, IBM and such. So they, des it. they deserve to keep going, I guess. Well, I, I just love to see them recreate themselves as a premium product supplier like <laughs> Apple. You know, can you imagine there's Microsoft, there's Apple, and then there's everyone else who just designs <laughs> boxes or whatever, or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, Steve, we might wrap it up there. So thanks again for the chat. <laughs> Excellent. Alrighty, so don't forget to check out our website, SciTechCulture.com. You can get all of our links there. Uh, you can interact with us on Twitter, Facebook and Google+. Plus. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, if you think anyone's interested in these discussions that we have on a regular basis or you can want to, or people that like our blogs or photography or whatever else we produce um, on our website, feel free to send them there. We'd greatly appreciate that. Alright, so that's it for this episode. We'll catch you next time.